All right, in the last video, I showed you how to bring in your refined sketch into Illustrator, how to onion skin it. Take it down 50%, lock it, make a new layer on top, and then start creating these vector paths. I showed you with the shape tool, making that perfect circle, and then an ellipse that I modified with the pencil tool, my favorite tool, how you can swap between a stroke outline which is usually the default, or just a black fill with no stroke, which is what we want everything to be at the end. And how you can set tools like the pencil tool by double clicking on them to be more smooth versus more accurate. And you know that based on how many anchor points there are. So what if I've done that and I've filled it in so I'm going to use this example, for instance, use the selection tool and swap it. But I want this to be even more smooth. Well, there is a fantastic tool that is called the Smooth Tool. And unfortunately, in starting in 2023's version of, Photo, of Illustrator, they took it out of the general. So you have to get it again by going to the three dots. And I recommend putting it underneath your pencil tool. So go to those three dots and you'll find what looks like this. I've already added it in. It's like a pencil with little zebra stripes called the smooth tool. And then you can drag that in. So this is what the smooth tool does. When you use the large selection tool and you select a path, if you use the smooth tool, you can just it's like smudging over it. You can average out the anchor points. To smooth it out. So that's very helpful. I can do that here as well. You have to select it first. And you can just kind of smooth out some of your your drawing. So the pencil tool allows you to smooth beforehand, but also smooth after with the smooth tool. Okay, so far I like those shapes. So, but there are other ways to make vector paths shapes other than the pencil tool and the smooth tool. I do not want you to ever use the paintbrush because it is not at all intuitive to what you think. So what the paintbrush is, is a stroke-based tool in Illustrator, which is all for line art. So it's good for doing digital inking of line art, but we're going to be learning that later. What we want to do is, is define these closed path shapes. So the tool that is so common to Illustrator that it's in the slides of kind of the intro to all this stuff, under proving ground number two, remember these slides, I give you some tips, so some helpful Illustrator tips right here. And this is the most, you know, unanimous, ubiquitous, all-powerful tool in Illustrator. doesn't mean it's the easiest to use, but it can and do anything you need it to. And it's called the Pin Tool. So I need to teach it to you even though it's been there since the beginning and it's pretty tricky to use. So the Pin Tool is right underneath the Selection Tools. You have the Large Selection Tool will select the whole thing. And the small selection tool is used for selecting individual anchor points or groups of anchor points. So if I use the small selection tool, the white arrow, and I click on an anchor point, I can actually modify it and transform just that anchor point. Right. We'll get to that later. But right now, I'm going to click on the tool that's underneath it, which is the pin tool. I'm not going to open up the drawer because there's lots of versions. I'm just going to use the regular pen tool. And then to show you how it works and how it's different than the pencil, if I click and drag, this happens. I'm not drawing anything. Instead, what I did was I plotted an anchor point, and then I pulled curves out from it to show that it is a curve. And then I click, 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 and I click, and, I click, and, I, and then I click to close the path. <laughs> So notice the only one that gave me a curved line between two anchors was the one that I clicked and dragged before I clicked again. 
and that gives you what's called a Bezier handle. So, how do I make complex shapes? Well, what if I want to make this shape, which is very similar to this shape, right? But I want to make it with the pin tool. So what I do is I start, and then I let it go straight. I'm not clicking anywhere. And then I click where I want it to end. So it's connecting paths between these two anchor points. And then if I want it to be curved, I click and then I drag. And by pulling out these handles, I can set that curve. Okay, now this is the tricky part. Because I was curved on that anchor point, that anchor point is going to be curved on both sides. So that handle is curving that side. This handle is curving now what I'm doing. And the only way I can undo that so it's a straight again is to click on the anchor. <laughs> and now it's a straight. And so if I want to go into the curve on this side and round that out a little bit, I, I end up where I want to end it, and then I click and drag. And I have that curve. And then if I want to control it again, I click back on the anchor, which is just an easier way to do it than have curves go into curves. And then I click and curve and make that shape. And then I click back on the anchor so I can control the curve. And then I'm going to click here, curve it out, and then keep that curve and, and close the loop. Now that the loop is closed, I can use something like the pencil tool to modify it. Now what is great about that is it really controls how many anchor points you have because you have to physically plot each one. But then the same tools are helpful, the pencil tool, the smooth tool, to reduce some of those anchor points, get it as smooth and clean as possible. And as defined to what you want as possible. All right, so how do I check it? I have to turn off my sketch underneath, just turn that eyeball off, and then I have to use the small selection tool to click off so I don't get those red marks anymore around it, showing me the anchor. So this is what I have so far. So I've been avoiding the big shape. This big shape is something that is best done with the pen tool, honestly. I could try it with the pencil. I'm pretty seasoned with the pencil, but you really don't want to stop the pencil before you click cleared the whole thing, right? So it'd be a lot of starts and stops and kind of messy. With the pen tool, this is how you can do your rough first pass. And it's going to be a little jarring what happens, but just, well, I'll do it small first and then show you. So with complex shapes, instead of setting curves as you go, this is what I recommend. Just do it with straights. So just click, move, click, move, click, move. just to get around to the end. They're actually logo designers that all they ever do are clean polygon logos, so they never have to use curves. <laughs> so if you do that, right, you'll get it kind of blocked out, and then how do you refine it? You simply go in with the pen tool. You have to select it first. And when you click on the anchor points, well, when you select it, use the small selection, you'll see that on each angled point you made, anchor you made, that's a straight line to a straight line, it will give you what's called a corner tool. And you can pull out a curve. Now, if you have everything selected, it will pull out a curve on everything. So you need to select the individual anchor you want to affect. So in this case, I'm using the small selection tool. I click on that anchor point. I can just curve that one. And then I click on this anchor point, and I can just curve this one. And you'll see it will drag the curve out equally on both sides. And it's limited when it hits the next anchor point. You can't go beyond that. The other option you have is you can get rid of anchor points with the pin tool. If I just hover over an anchor point that's already been plotted, you'll see that it'll say pin tool minus. Then I can just delete one. Why might that be helpful? Well, then when I select it with the small selection tool, then I can control it with curves. 
And if I click on the anchor and there is a curve there, that allows me to adjust the curve with the handle. So you see these handles, right? And if I want to convert an anchor point, this is what's underneath the pin tool, and you can do it by Shift C. I can convert a straight one into curves by just clicking and dragging onto it. And then I can actually drag one half of the handle back. <laughs> so there's a lot to it. That's why I have a cheat sheet for you if you want to try to start mastering the pin tool. And these are some of the shortcuts. But there's always the pencil tool to save you in the end. <laughs> but the pin tool will give you the ultimate control of every, every anchor point. So I'm going to leave that there for now. But honestly, what I would do with this kind of organic design, because I don't need a lot of super straight lines and angles, which the pin tool is great at, is I'm just going to use the pencil tool, and I'm just going to modify this with smooth turned on all the way. And I'm just going to round that out. And as long as I start on the path and end on the path, it will do a good job. But sometimes it will give me more anchor points than I want. And then I just use the smooth tool. When there are too many anchor points and I want to simplify it, reduce it. So now, what does that look like? Pretty good so far for what I'm after, right? It's looking very Chinese dragon so far. All right. So with this really complicated shape, let's really try just using the pin tool the way it's intended. There is what's called the free form pin tool or the curve tool, which is new to Illustrator. They're trying to get people to use. And it tries to speed it up for you. And it's underneath the pin tool. So if you use this, they call it the curvature tool. It's a little different in that you can pull out your curves. But really, you have to understand the pin tool in the same way. So this is like, instead of building it with polygons, I'm building it with curves. In some ways, it makes it more complicated because then I have handles on each of those anchor points. So instead, I would just recommend using the regular pin tool and then clicking and doing it with straights first when it's a complex shape. And doing it with as few straights as you can. And you see it's going to overtake my eye and then it becomes impossible to see. Right? So that's okay. And if you want to, you can always swap it so that you're drawing with the outline instead. But this black shape is going to cover up the eye. And I'll show you how we cut that out later. And if you're brave, you can click and drag to make a curve, right? But then you want to click back on this. Then you can click and drag for a curve. Then you want to click back on this. Click and drag for a curve. So it just takes practice to learn how to do it. But it works pretty well. And it just needs to be this way to be so versatile and so accurate. Okay, so you can see the difference. At the top, I started using curves. At the bottom, I just used straights. But then I can just use the pencil tool. I have to select it and see the anchors. Or I can use the small selection tool and use the cornering tools here like this and just curve that out. Same thing with this, just curve it out. Same thing with this. So there's all kinds of ways just to get to your, your clean vector shape. And the reason you really need the pin tool